Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 20 of the PE Geek podcast, the big two zero, as you might say. And um, I'm really excited because this is getting really close to the quarter of a century. And um, a quarter of a century of podcasts seems seems pretty cool considering I started this. And, you know, I wasn't sure where it was headed, but um, I've certainly uh, am now treating it with just as much um, enthusiasm as my blog has had in the you know six or seven years that I've been blogging about it and really looking forward to getting out a heap of new episodes and I actually have gone and scheduled in the next five episodes I know what I'm doing um, they're all being recorded and uh, I really look forward to bringing those out to you um, I've got entire episodes dedicated to specific topics and questions that I get asked a lot and I've actually gone and broken up um, a popular keynote presentation that I did recently and I've arranged that into its own series of episodes and this is the first episode from that particular keynote. Now the keynote I did in um, in December this year, or sorry November this year, was all around motivating physical activity um, through technology and in it I went and explored a series of particular activities that we do a lot and teach regularly and looked at how you can improve motivation in those particular activities. And the very first and the most popular one from that series of activities was dance. So I thought I'd dedicate a whole episode to what sort of opportunities exist to use tech to help teach you um, dance. And for me, I mean, I've got no knowledge whatsoever when it comes to dance. Sure, I did a few dance units at university. Um, I enjoy it. It's, It's a bit of fun. But what opportunities do I have to increase engagement, to increase um, motivation in this whole world of um, technology? And I mean, how well can it be used to increase your instruction um, and that sort of thing? So that's where this episode is headed. Before I get there, though, I do want to point out that my funding website, fundmype.com, is pretty much almost live. Now, I mentioned this in the last episode, episode 19 that you could go there and register your interest to be alerted when the website goes live. Now, the website will be going live in January, um, and I certainly recommend heading along there and putting your interest down. Um, Fun My PE is unlike anything I've ever done before. It's going to be an entire website dedicated to raising funds for PE programs around the planet. And the best part about it is that you will be able to use it as a platform to raise funds in your own community, Um, even wider than that with people who have interests and similar interests. Um, I will be also funding a program a month in its entirety, um, things that pique my interest and not necessarily just related to technology. I mean, this, this platform is going to be designed so you can fund anything to do with your PE program. If you're a PE teacher, you need some money to do something put it up onto fundmype.com and um, you never know. It may get funded either by either myself or just the generosity of the PE community um, who shares in your vision about quality physical education. Um, As I mentioned, I will be funding one myself every month and that'll just be based on uh, what I see on the site and the things that I think are innovative and and great ideas and um, I'll be getting behind those. And I'll also be partnering with sponsors, um, people that I approach and say that um, um, you know, um, you know, there's, you know there's, a, there's, a, there's a great audience here that need funding because it's sort of the brand that I've created and the presence I have in that space to drive even more funds to PE programs that um, that I think deserve it. So look out for Fund My PE to go live in January just after all the New Year celebrations and Christmas and so on. And yeah, we're really excited to see how it can um, work towards improving your own PE programs. So until then, jump onto the site and register your interest so that you know when the site goes live and you can be part of that first round of funding um, that happens in January. All right, let's dive into today's content. Now, as we all know, there are those units that you teach where not all students share the same level of enthusiasm as they might have in other areas. And I mean, I'm talking about things like fitness testing and running and um, various exercise and other things that you need to do. And not always do they share that same level of excitement that you may have had um, in, say, a basketball 
um, unit or a soccer unit or things along those lines. And one of the ones for me that I recurringly have seen and noticed is dance. And I mean, dance is part of lots of units. It's fantastic in so many different ways for motor skill development, um, having people develop routines and work as a workers teams and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I, I really value it in the program. However, we know it doesn't always appeal to everyone. Um, so, I mean, with the role that technology has, I mean, what ways are there to flavor this in a different way so that you can get the most buy-in from all students? And obviously technology is a tool and it doesn't apply to every single student and not everyone will be as, um, as engaged by the fact that you are using tech. But presenting things in different ways and using it as that hook at the start of a lesson can lead up to flow on effects that basically flavor the entire unit with the level of engagement that um, you, you would like. So I'm going to be diving into some of the things that you could do as um, that sort of gateway to engagement uh, with your dance unit. And I, I absolutely cannot go past the first one. And it is something that I share at my PE Geek workshops and um, the resource is justdancepe.com and when you visit that URL, it's going to redirect you to YouTube and when you get to YouTube, you're going to find that there are, there's this YouTube channel um, and basically there's about three or 400 Just Dance videos. Now, if you've never heard of Just Dance, it's actually a, a video game and the whole idea of it is that you actually have to dance and you get scored on your dancing. And I mean, they, but you use the controller and it scores you based on how well you match the beat and all those sorts of things. But in the YouTube channel, um, this particular user has recorded, simply recorded his screen of him playing the video game. You don't see him. All you do is see the screen that has the moves and the actions and the music and so on. And um, basically, you follow along with those actions that are up on the screen. They come up in really clear, um, sort of in a really clear way so that you can follow along and know what's coming up. And the best part is they're matched to really popular music of today. So uh, I guarantee you head along to justdancepe.com and you'll find, as I said, three or 400 videos that you can hit play on. They all go for about three, four, five minutes. Great warm-up activity, sort of introductory stuff that you can um, have students do for warm-ups, even if it's not a dance unit or use them as warm-ups in a dance unit and particularly they're high energy. So uh, really, really good to, to get people um, sort of warmed up and in that right mindset for a dance unit. Now, I mean, these particular dances range in, in difficulty. I mean, you don't you don't necessarily have to be an expert to do them, but, um, you know, some of the moves can be quite hard. So if, if you've got younger students, you know, elementary or even younger than that, then you might do a Google search for Just Dance um, Junior and uh, or Just Dance Disney. And the same thing, you'll find an abundance of videos of even Disney characters taking you through some of these popular dances. And the, the fact that it uses the animations that they produce to actually put these together and the music from popular songs and so on um, makes them a really, really attractive um, things to use in a dance unit or as the, just as a warm-up in PE. I mean, to be honest, most of the time I've ever used them is as a warm-up because they are that, that perfect sort of length. Um, I should point out that there have been a number of PE teachers on Twitter who have got connected through um, a Just Dance unit like this. And what they've actually done is they've used Skype to arrange a time and they can be in absolute different countries and they ring each other up on Skype and they do a video chat and compete against one another in this Just Dance style. Now the way it worked basically would be that one group dances, the other group watches them via video, the other group dances um, for return and, and then they're sort of scored on it. Um, best part is it's a really great way to sort of do collaborative um, activity in PE, really easy to set up if you know someone in a different country and your time and and so on matches, um, but lots of fun. I mean, at our school, we we haven't gone down the Skype line, but we have had classes compete against one another um, on a dance that they have chosen in our PE um, classroom. And the way we sort of engaged all of the older students is whatever song they picked, it obviously had a type of um, style and so on associated with it. So if it was a 
you know, 80s themed song like Eye of the Tiger, then they actually had to come dressed in appropriate clothing and so on for that particular activity. Um, We recorded them. We each scored one another and we did a bit of a peer assessment using those dancers as the um, sort of motivation to get them engaged and excited about something that they normally wouldn't be excited about. So we made it more than just um, an event that was happening in our classes. We actually involved, you know, dress up and that sort of helped get everyone on board with what we were trying to achieve. So Just Dance PE is brilliant. Um, I mean, it's just a YouTube, just a YouTube channel uh, and you can go there and it's regularly updated with new videos as the Just Dance um, games come out and he records his his progress on it and puts them up online and, and it benefits us because all we have to do is just press play in our classroom, find somewhere to project that um, on a large screen or if not, just from a laptop or whatever it may be and turn the music up and rest assured knowing that you're going to have a lot of fun. I think part of its appeal for me is that, I mean, I could never teach dance. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I can. I have taught it before at uni. Um, I'm not, it's not going to be a specialty of mine, that's for sure. But what I love about it is I can actually work to engage the people in my class because there is this instruction happening up on the screen and I actually put myself into the same situation as the students and I join in. And that for me is the single biggest way to motivate those students who are actually um, maybe not engaged in that process uh, by seeing me, their teacher, involved, looking probably as um, unco- <laughs> uncoordinated as them at points um, is a great way to actually showcase that we're all human beings and we're all learning. And, um, you know, I absolutely get engagement out of that fact that I'm joining in. Now, on a similar vein, um, there is an app that I have used before with younger students, and it's called See Fit Dance. And it's an app that has a series of um, video tutorials included in it to take people or young students, I should say, through dance routines. And the best part about this particular app is it's actually been crafted by a teacher for teachers. And in it, there's basically four 10-minute dance videos designed for students in a classroom, um, you know, working to improve their fitness and so on. And it, it breaks it up into the key components in a really good way that you would go about teaching these particular activities. And the four things that you, the four types of dances that you learn through the app um, are a West African dance, which is really cool. And I have done that with my students. Um, So there's some hip hop dancing, some Latin dancing, and then there's um, some sort of hip hop technique um, class as well. So once you've done that, I mean, there's no reason why they couldn't combine elements to come up with their own dance style in some sort of um, remix of those. But what I love about it is you've got someone who clearly knows how to teach dance, taking it um, for your students. And it means that you can float around and be that second teacher in the classroom, um, which is great because, I mean, ideally, imagine having two teachers in your class. Um, Obviously, your school probably, you know, in some cases, that would be impossible, but you flip the classroom over and have an expert through a video teaching your class, and then you're there to give one-on-one, then effectively you have done that. I mean, you've got two teachers in your class. It's the easiest way to do two teachers without having to go out and hire a new teacher. Um, but yeah, I mean, I absolutely loved the C-Fit dance approach. I loved how it taught students. And in fact, I mean, one of the students in our um, classes suggested that we could get the iPads out and they could use their and choose their own dances. And I mean, it was great to be able to see that the students were working independently through one of those four dance styles um, on their own. And then the opportunity struck that they could then teach each other. So what you had done is turn this dance unit into a peer teaching type unit um, just through the app and through the fact that they were able to differentiate really well without you needing sort of four teachers to teach four different dances at once. I mean, they used the video and the instructional content in the app to be able to do that really effectively. So that's See Fit Dance. Uh, It's available on the App Store and is certainly recommended. Now, the next app that I think is fantastic is called Zumba Dance. Now, I've blogged about this in a top app series, um, and you can actually, in that in that actual blog post, see a video of me completing a dance. Uh, pretty embarrassing because I'm not really that good, but the cool thing about it is 
in this particular app, it uses the front-facing camera to track your activity. So imagine resting your iPad on a chair or something and having it facing you, um, opening the app up and then standing in the right position so that it can so that it can capture the whole part of you and then um, copying the dance activities. And basically what you see is the app then begins to score you and uh, based on how well you've performed. Now, I don't usually get very good when I do it, um, but I have done this with a class before and um, I only used one iPad and basically I set it up like I described, had it sitting on a, on a table actually, and I rotated the student's through that role so every sort of you know 20 seconds I just you know blew a whistle I think I did and uh, and the students moved we had a new person being scored and the rest of them were just following along on the big screen following the moves now Zumba dance is pretty high energy I mean if you've ever seen Zumba it is dance but it's also sort of um, high level sort of aerobic style movements and it certainly works for that sort of warm-up or that sort of um, high intensity activity uh, to get them refocused and then and then move on to what you might be doing in the lesson. So I've always treated them as a warm up, and um, found that they've been that perfect sort of addition. Now, if you've ever been to one of my workshops, I actually do this in one of the sessions, um, and people find it pretty entertaining. That's for sure, because <laughs> because I I'm not very good at it as I've described, um, but that doesn't mean it's not fun, and that doesn't mean it doesn't work to sort of teach you something or showcase um, the sort of ethic that, you know, work ethic that you can get out of the app um, just by pressing play and following along with the moves. Now, um, the next one on the list is an app that I recently discovered when I was searching for hip-hop dancing and trying to find some instructional videos that I could use to teach some hip-hop dance um, earlier on in the year. And the app that I found was Learn Hip Hop Dance. And as the name suggests, it, it takes you through a series of really high quality videos, um, step by step and broken down in a really logical way to teach you how to do hip hop dancing. Now, the first lot of lessons are completely free. And then after that, you need to unlock them um, with a with a with a purchase. And um, I mean, I did that. And it actually over the course of a number of weeks um, with our year 10 students, we got to a stage where we we're able to actually create a hip hop dance um, routine based on the moves that they had taught. And the best part was the moves were broken up into tiny bite sized chunks that were really learnable. And then you could then go and apply those with the other moves that you learnt to create this full sort of piece. So that's Learn Hip Hop Dance and head over to the show notes at thepeergeek.com forward slash 20 to see all the links that I've mentioned um, in today's episode. Now, finally, the last app I want to share with you is from the creators of the app Motion Tennis. Now, if you've never seen Motion Tennis it turns your iPhone or iPod into a tennis racket and then you actually swing it like a tennis racket and play tennis. And it is, it's, it's amazing because it actually responds to your swing and the type of swing that you do and translates that into real gameplay in the actual game, which you're, which you're connecting to with an Apple TV. Now, that sort of technology, they've bundled it up into a dance app. And the way it works is you hold your iPhone or your iPod. It doesn't work on an iPad. You connect it to an Apple TV wirelessly and then you can start to play. And in the same way as Just Dance, it tracks your actual dance style using the accelerometer and all of the um, measuring tools in the iPhone or the iPod and turns that into your score. High energy, heaps of fun and really accurate as well because you know if you're following along with the moves, in the same time, in the same pace, and in the same intensity, and so on, then your score is going to be quite powerful, and um, so it means quite quite good. And, and at the same token, if you're not doing those things, then your score won't be very good. Um, best part about it is, I mean, sure, you can have multiple people with their own iPhones connected up to the Apple TV to do it, but it doesn't mean that you can't just have one person doing it um, and everyone else just following along with the actual activity. Um, and then as a class sort of passing the iPhone or iPod around to get an overall class score. So that's called Dance Party TV. 
and comes highly recommended as a free app that you can download and just have a lot of fun with. And uh, it's got all, you know, current songs in it and you can invite and dance against friends if they've got their own device as well. So um, there's some of the more popular dance styles and a bit of hip hop and things that I would do. Um, However, I have recently discovered an app that you could use to teach um, sort of country style line dances and so on. Um, You know, all the popular dances that you may have done in your childhood and even still be doing. And that is an iPad app called I Dance Country. And in it, there's video tutorials around lots of different songs from that genre of music that you can certainly press play on. And in the same way, just put them out there to your to your students and, and have them follow along and then you become that secondary teacher in the classroom. So uh, there we have it. There's a few resources that you can use to motivate dance uh, in your class and teach it in a different way. And basically, I think the best part about all of them is that they basically run along that flipped classroom um, pedagogy where you know, you're know you almost giving the instruction over to someone else uh, and having that part easily replicatable. Um, so that you can do the part which isn't, and that is provide this one-on-one feedback um, in your class to help improve students and move them to that next level and help engage them um, in a way that you couldn't do that if you were the one at the front of the room doing the teaching. So hopefully this episode's been helpful. As always, head over to the um, the blog at thepeergeek.com forward slash 20 to find any show notes. And until next time, Uh, I look forward to hearing any questions that you might have and you can address those at thepeergeek.com forward slash voicemail and you never know, maybe one of those episodes or one of those questions will find its way into an episode. All right, see you later.